Welcome to the Nittany Sports Huddle Post Game Show. This segment is brought to you by the Pennsylvania DUI Association. Stay tuned and we'll be right back with more after these messages. 500 people are killed every year in Pennsylvania because of others who drink and drive. If you're thinking about drinking and driving this holiday, think about this. You could lose your life or your freedom. My advice this holiday, don't drink and drive. Hey, this is Chris Thorpe, class of 1989, and you are watching Nittany Sports Huddle. Tune in. Don't change that channel. Welcome back to the Pennsylvania DUI Association post-game show where we'll be recapping this weekend's epic victory, the Nittany Lions' epic victory over the Ohio State Buckeyes, the number two ranked Ohio State, State Buckeyes. Buckeyes. Not just anybody, the number two ranked. That's right, that's right. They so were number big. two. That is huge. That's huge. You know, we talk about, we called it an, an epic victory. But, but you know what, Blair? I, I think that looking at the season, you know, we did the, the, the mid-season uh, kind of recap and, and, and gave grades out and things of that nature for the first half of the season um, and how the team has grown by leaps and bounds now. Yes. You know, there was a time when the coaches didn't even understand how to make adjustments at all. Halftime, in game, what have you. Now we've seen in the beginning of this season that they were able to make halftime adjustments. And then the final two games of the sec first half of the season, they were making in-game adjustments. So the coaching staff is growing and getting better. Uh, and now the in-game adjustments outstanding on Saturday. Well, I, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. It's, it's, the, oh, it's Coach Franklin finally getting all the pieces to his puzzle. Mm -hmm. That now he can play. Yes, when you the, say the pieces to the puzzle are the players. The players as well as the coaches. Yes, yes. Four head line groomer. Hey, two big additions. I'll tell you that that was. I for some reason when I saw uh, Coach um, insert a, a a play on the on the internet. That's when I first saw it. I was just like, wow. I was blown away. And I said, that's how it needs to be presented. Now his quarterback is going to know every single read and where he needs to go with the ball. And that's what I see um, Trace. With, with Trace right now is some of those plays, he's not even thinking. He's just going through his progression and throwing the ball where it needs to be thrown. Outstanding play. You know, we going to, since we're on the offensive side of the ball a little bit, outstanding play with the things that Saquon is doing. He's getting bigger, stronger, faster. He's starting to figure out his offensive line. So, Everything is starting to gel now off to the side because I, I got to save everything for the defense because this w victory last night was a, a defense of Well, special powerhouse. teams, too. Yes. Defensive yes. powerhouse, without a doubt. I agree. Defensive powerhouse. But 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 you, we're talking about offense. Big plays down the field. You were always saying that we've got to stretch the field. We've got to stretch the field. We've got to stretch the field. And we've stretched the field. <laughs> um, you know, big plays. I know we were leading the Big Ten in 20-plus um, yard pass plays and plays overall um, in the first half of the season. Well, it showed up again last night, you know, 20-plus yard plays um, over and over and over again. You know, these kids, one of the things that, you know, I was disappointed about and, and, and taught, did a, did a recording um, during the Michigan game, you know, mm -hmm. that there's been opportunities for kids to make big plays and they missed the opportunity. Well, last night they captured the opportunities uh, and, and it was just absolutely outstanding, both on offense and on defense. Yeah, yeah, and, and special teams. And we had, we had, we had a, a couple breakdowns in special teams, but overall the guys contributed when they needed to. I think it was a, a big help us having that week off, got some guys healthy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that gave us more depth on those special teams because now those guys that was on special teams, they became the starters and then the new starters came back. So those guys they're... have less reps on the field. Their legs are fresher. Yes. They, 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 they have the feel for the game, the ebb and flow of the game. And I'm going to tell you what, Haley's scoop and score was outstanding. He, he, he showed the young man, um, our, our number 28, who wanted this scoop and score. They you got to get there fast. Yeah, you got to get there. You got to get there. So, um, just, I mean, there's so many things that, that, that deserve being covered. Um, the one thing I want to touch on on offense, while we're on offense, is that 
the desire, the determination, and the grit to just keep going. Play after play after play. Whenever it looks like all hope is lost, those guys never give up, man. I, I saw that, you know, starting in the pit game because we, we talked about the adjustments like you mentioned earlier. They came out, made so many adjustments at halftime, and they never quit from that point That's on. Right. They have been still putting it pedal to the gas. Yes, we had the, the Michigan game was kind of derailment because that's when we first realized we had all our linebackers gone. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they they exploited that. Yes, and that <laughs> that that takes your your whole offense and defense in a different mindset because right. you know y'all deficient over there. But it gives opportunity to get some guys some experience. Now these guys are playing in all cylinders, and it's outstanding. Outstanding, <laughs> playing on all cylinders, though. So that's uh, offense and special teams, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back with more from Nittany Sports Huddle and the Pennsylvania DUI Association post-game show after these messages. There are thousands of us. We live and work in every county. If you drink and drive, <laughs> we will find you. And we'll remove you from the streets of Pennsylvania before you kill yourself or someone else. Don't even think about drinking and driving. Hi, this is DJ Dozier, 1986. You're watching Nittany Sports Huddle TV. Welcome back to the Nittany Sports Huddle Pennsylvania DUI Association post-game show. We here. We're gonna start talking a little bit about defense. Okay? Defense, <laughs> defense. Yeah. Because these guys last night, from the first snap of the game, they had their ears pinned back and they were getting after them. And that's what we saw. Everybody kept on saying, "Well, you know, uh, JD Barrett didn't look like he was on. He was off a little bit here and there." No, that was that pressure. It's, it's easy to be off, right? It's easy to be off when you got lions climbing down your back. It's easy to be off. So, so, so yeah, that 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 JD Bar Barrett was the same Barrett that he has been for the past two years. He's an exceptional player, an exceptional quarterback. But what happened is he ran into an exceptional the group. Den. That's right, into the lions den, and an exceptional group of guys that play football together. You know, we. We were able to just rush hard from the defensive line's perspective. They were rushing hard the entire first half. Didn't even actually get a hand on Barry. Couldn't get a hand on him. But, but, but we were rotating our players. We were rotating that defensive line. So when you've got eight young guys, now remember, these are the same young guys that started off in the beginning of the season mm -hmm. that were kind of getting pushed around, that couldn't, couldn't control the line of scrimmage. Well, Listen that was, here. Th that was because they were young. We lost Playing three. Experience. Yes, we lost three guys last year. Three studs, yes. all to the NFL. Dude. So, That's so the next level, doing these young things. pups, these young pups had to find out what it takes to be competitive at this level. Absolutely. And I think that's what one thing that helped with the linebackers getting hurt. So that next tier of guys got a chance to get some more work from special teams. Absolutely. Now they're in the starters. So now once those guys got healthy, now we're right back hey, with so that powerful defense. That powerful defense. You know, when when you look at the flow of the game how in the third and fourth quarter, the defensive line, the pressure became intense. Then Coach Price starts dialing up a couple of blitzes here and there. Um, you know, guys showing up and making plays. That's what, that's what big time college football is about. Everybody plays hard, you, but there's gonna be a, an opportunity for each of those 11 guys to do something. They might not stand out, like, like um, Cole Farmer, on a second down, the first time they ran the the, uh, the reverse to Samuel, they put him in motion and then ran him back on a reverse. They, you no know, farmer could have been out of position, but he held his ground. He, he held the corner, and um, uh, Jason Cabinda comes in and makes a big play for a stop. You know, Cabinda gets the tackle, but, but that... Farmer makes the play. That's team. That's team football, man. That's the team concept. And and I get a little fired up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but that's what they've been building on. We, we kept Absolutely. on saying a lot of things. Well, they look generic. They're not, you know, being as aggressive as they can be. I think the coaching staff was just waiting for the players to be able to dial in some of those blitzes at the speed and effect them that they have to be. So. They can make those stops, those plays. You know, I, and like you said, it's it's a team thing. One guy, he he got a responsibility, so the other guy can do his job. Absolutely. And, and absolutely. The first half of the pit game early in the season, I saw guys trying to do too much. 
-hmm. Now it seems like they've settled down. They, they, everybody's Playing doing their, their job. Yep. Playing your position and, and handling your responsibility. And that comes with trusting your teammate. If I trust that my teammate is going to do what he's supposed to do, I don't have to try to do too much. And that's what these guys, like you said, have, have fallen into. And, and speaking of defense, you know, this has been this first game back since the first game of the season. Gave up a huge play on the on the 70 yard touchdown run by by taking on the block with the wrong shoulder. And what happens? He comes back and gets the sack to end the game. Why? Grit, determination. That's what it's all about. You know, we know that, that playing football, period, even from a puck, you're you're gonna get beat on a play. Some, some throughout, throughout the game, you're going to get beat. But what do you do when faced with that adversity? Do you, do you tuck your tail and go away? No. Or do you stand up like a lion? Yeah. You know those great players who are good players are going to stand up and they're going to keep on building and learn from that mistake. Learn from that. And then keep on applying themselves. Because Absolutely. if you're playing this, this physical game, you're going to get knocked over. You're going to get ran over. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I don't care who you are, how great you are, or think you are. You're still going to get knocked on your butt in your yeah, game. Yeah, absolutely. If you play long enough, if you play hard enough, somebody's going to get you because you're going to get caught. You're going to get caught. But that's all good. It's what happens after that play. So I'm going to tell you what. We couldn't be more proud of these young Lions than we are um, on today. You know? But before we end, before we end, we got to say that a lot of people are trying to put a lot of pressure and uh, – you know, a lot of uh, weight on the fact of Franklin not winning a big time game. Oh yeah. Well, now he's in, he doesn't quite the critics. He's yeah. got that against yeah. the number two team. The number two team oh, in the nation. Oh, he was number two. Were absolutely. <laughs> they they used to be the used to be Buckeyes number two team in the nation. Step down the road here into that gladiator house called Beaver Stadium and took one on the chin. And we still probably beat him on the huddle cast too with both. Oh, yeah. We beat him twice. Right. We beat him twice this week. That's it. Hey, I'm Quintus McDonald. I'm Blair Thomas. And we're Nittany Sports Hub. Todd Rucci, class of 1993. You're watching Nittany Sports Huddle TV.